The Tribe Called Quest is one of the most quintessential hip-hop groups of all time. They achieved global success and inspired plenty of other artists who have followed in their wake. From East Coast origins to latter-day reunions, this is the untold truth of A Tribe Called Quest. All four members of A Tribe Called Quest are New York natives, with Q-Tip, Fife Dog, and Jerobi hailing from Queens and Ali Shaheed Muhammad from Brooklyn. Their original band name was Quest, with the rest of the name eventually coming from one of the group's high school friends. They began making music together in 1985. They were all childhood friends, which is surely one reason why they had a successful dynamic. As Hanif Abdur Rakib, author of the book Go Ahead in the Rain, notes to a tribe called Quest, told Wisconsin Public Radio, they were borrowing from ancestors, but also honoring that borrowing by understanding that they were not the first to attempt the type of sounds they were going for. We believe our listeners to be a little bit more intelligent. In their early days, a tribe called Quest formed a unit called the Native Tongues, along with fellow East Coast hip hop artists Jungle Brothers and De La Soul. Their first record deal with Jive then came together in 1989. Early on, they rapped about social justice and consumerism, but did so with an almost sardonic flair that proved appealing to a mass audience. Over the course of just four years, the group produced three studio albums that are still widely beloved by hip-hop fans. 1990's People's Instinctive Travels and the Paths of Rhythm, 1991's The Low End Theory, and 1993's Midnight Marauders. The Low End Theory is a landmark album that successfully infused jazz and hip-hop. It garnered a tribe called Quest a new kind of audience and introduced otherwise unexposed listeners to hip-hop. Released in September 1991, this groundbreaking record not only solidified a tribe called Quest's artistic legacy, it also forever altered the conversation about rap and hip-hop. Full of humor and optimism, Lowen tackled many unflattering stereotypes about the genre head-on. A Tribe Called Quest also proved their true musicianship and artistry by combining Afrocentrism and many genres with modern progressive sounds. As Rolling Stone noted in 2016, they metaphorically drew comparisons between their lyrical gems and jazz players like Lonnie Smith, Grover Washington Jr., and Ron Carter, the latter joining the theory sessions to add his supple bass notes to tracks like Excursions and Buggin' Out. The album's tracks also cover some pretty heavy topics, including misogyny and the brutalism of rap. A Tribe Called Quest will move on to further success in the coming years, but the low end theory remains their masterpiece. While growing up in the St. Albans neighborhood in Queens in the 1970s, Malik Taylor, aka Fife Dog, was most comfortable performing in school plays and in church. He would eventually gravitate toward writing poetry, which would prove a gateway into a hip-hop career. He met his future bandmate, Jerobi White, when Jerobi's family moved to Queens in 1981. As neighbors, they began beatboxing and rapping together. From there, Fife Dog introduced Jerobi to Q-Tip at his school's gym. As Jerobi recalled to Rolling Stone in 2021, we played basketball every day, hours upon hours. Inevitably, somebody from around the way would be like, I heard y'all rap, let's battle, and we'd battle somebody every day. The group would go on to make their freshman album, but afterwards, a good amount of time passed before they would meet again in the studio. Shortly before A Tribe Called Quest began recording their sophomore album, Q-Tip had a run-in with Fife Dog on a train that was headed from Queens to Manhattan. At the time, Fife Dog was a teenager who didn't seem interested in seriously pursuing music, which is why he was only on two tracks on their first album. But Q-Tip convinced him to get serious, and the rest is history. So we gotta kick something else to them other than what kind of car I drive or how many chicks I brought home from the party last night, you know? The Native Tongues was a collective of hip-hop artists from the late 80s to the early 90s. It included the likes of Queen Latifah, De La Soul, Moni Love, Black Sheep, Chi Ali, Jungle Brothers, and A Tribe Called Quest. But the collective was tested during the recording of Tribe's The Low in Theory. Q-Tip's controversial decision to replace the Native Tongues' Red Alert with Russell Simmons' Rush Management created a rift between De La Soul and the Tribe Called Quest, and it also led to long-lasting tension with the Jungle Brothers as well. As Q-Tip recalled to Vibe in 2007, Jungle didn't f*** with us after the switch. Everybody was hurt. 
What's most unfortunate is that the native tongues may have been one of the main reasons a tribe called Quest became a success in the first place. For example, Q-Tip's relationship with De La Soul led to headliner spots on tour. However, some people recall that Native Tongues was made out to be more of a collective than it really ever was. As Dave from De La Soul told Vlad TV in 2015, it's kind of funny how people create this big thing about Native Tongues, when in reality, it really only stems off of one record. Nothing more than that. In regards to the Native Tongues, there is no, there's no commanding line of order or nothing like that. Scenario, the final track and one of three singles on the low in theory, birthed Busta Rhymes' musical career. Not only did the song make Busta a star, it's also still considered one of A Tribe Called Quest's definitive hit singles. At the time, a 19-year-old Busta was a member of Leaders of the New School. The song also originally featured De La Soul and Black Sheep, though their verses were ultimately left out of the released track. Scenario was a collaboration among many different rappers, including Charlie Brown and Dinko D of Leaders of the New School. But not everything about the story behind this song is a happy memory. One tragic element involves MC Kid Hood, a friend of Q-Tips who also made his rap debut on the remix. Sadly, he was beaten and then shot in the head just two days after filming the music video for the song's remix. Georgie Porgy was originally meant to be the sixth track on the Low End Theory, but it was ultimately rewritten and retitled as Show Business after being rejected by the label. There was good reason for the change, as Georgie Porgy is possibly the most homophobic song ever to almost be released by a major artist. It could have been a significant part of a tribe called Quest's legacy, but thanks to their label's wisdom, they've been able to move past that controversy. So why did the group name this song after a 19th century English nursery rhyme? There's been speculation that the original Georgie Porgy rhyme was written about a homosexual scandal involving King Charles I. Lyrics in the original track have since emerged, and they included one particular rhyme contrasting Adam and Eve with Adam and Steve. Then the song gets even more explicit with more lyrics that are aggressively and pointedly homophobic. Thankfully for A Tribe Called Quest and the rest of us, this track never saw the light of day. By 1996, A Tribe Called Quest was releasing their fourth album, Beats, Rhymes, and Life. At this stage in their career, the group had achieved legendary status. With a plethora of musical riches to go around, they began collaborating with other artists like Faith Evans, Janet Jackson, and D'Angelo, as they influenced their sounds with their trademark Afrocentric-inspired and jazz-infused vibe. Q-Tip and late Detroit hip-hop artist Jay Dilla, who were together known as the production collective The Uma, produced the track Got Till It's Gone for Janet Jackson, which invoked the flavor of beats, rhymes, and life. The song takes the chorus from Joni Mitchell's classic folk rock song Big Yellow Taxi and incorporates lyrics that make it more about romance, in contrast to Mitchell's original message of urban development run amok. Q-Tip makes an appearance throughout the track in the background while also contributing a rap verse at the end. The song is ultimately about him and Janet playing the role of lovers lamenting their relationship, and it's even been rumored that they may have had an affair outside of the studio. 2011 saw the release of the documentary Beats, Rhymes, and Life, The Travels of a Tribe Called Quest, directed by the actor Michael Rappaport. The band members were initially upset about the movie. Before its Tribeca Film Festival premiere, Q-Tip tweeted his discontent as he declared, I am not in support of the A Tribe Called Quest documentary. Fife Dog ended up attending the film's Sundance Film Festival screening, but Q-Tip, Ali, and Jarobi sat it out. They later went on MTV, where they once again expressed their disapproval of the project. Q-Tip claimed that there were machinations to remove a tribe called Quest's producer credits and that they were taken out of the loop regarding creative decisions. For his part, Rappaport claimed that his goal in making the film was to reunite the group. Needless to say, he was disheartened by much of their feedback. As he told Rolling Stone, I knew I had to be ready to fight. I expected to fight the finances, the studios, even the subjects a bit, but I didn't know how bloody it would get. Rappaport explained to Vlad TV, And I love Q-Tip, and I respect the out of Q-Tip, and we've made peace over the film and that time. But the making of the movie was a pain in the ass. Ultimately, Q-Tip ended up supporting the documentary, and the film actually did lead to the group eventually reuniting. A Tribe Called Quest's first reunion happened in 2004, when they headlined the Rock the Bells concert in Anaheim, California. A couple of years later, they performed sold-out shows around North America. 
Fast forward to 2015, when the group commemorated the 25th anniversary of their debut album. The following year, they released a new album shortly after Fife Dog's death from complications of diabetes. With that album's release also came the news that it would be their last. According to Q-Tip, Fife Dog had left the rest of the group a quote, blueprint of what they needed to do in the studio. The album entitled We Got It From Here, Thank You For Your Service was recorded at Q-Tip's home, where he had a private studio built. The remaining trio of band members went on the media circuit to promote the album as they appeared on the likes of The Tonight Show and Saturday Night Live. The album was heavily political, with the group rapping about gentrification, reparations, the Dakota Access Pipeline at Standing Rock, and various metaphors about society and outer space. The track that made the biggest impact was We the People, which became an anthem against discrimination in America during a contentious political era. To make the message clear, the song's music video was purposefully released the day before the 2016 presidential election. In 2017, A Tribe Called Quest made a strong and unambiguous statement at the 59th Grammy Awards when they performed their song, We The People. They busted through a wall behind their fellow performers in a not-so-subtle metaphor about immigration. They were joined by other prominent artists like Consequence, Anderson Pack, and their old pal Busta Rhymes. We The People features a chorus from the perspective of a bigoted America, as it exhorts various minorities that they must go. A Tribe Called Quest prefaced their performance by dedicating it to the late Five Dog and offering a message of hope to the audience as they declared, We'd like to say to all of those people around the world, all those people who are pushing people who are in power to represent them, tonight we represent you. The group also performed some of their greatest hits, including Can I Kick It? Later in the show, Consequence and Busta Rhymes called out then-President Trump as Busta announced, I just want to thank President Agent Orange for the unsuccessful attempt at the Muslim ban. This was a moment of solidarity, as both Q-Tip and Ali Shaheed Muhammad identify as Muslim, and part of the protest performance featured Muslims walking out and standing on stage. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more grunge videos about your favorite musicians are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.